change mics right quick. I love that song. Um, Miss, Miss Jamie was singing that song the other night at, at, at choir practice and uh, I know when she, I told her, I said, when you get ready, um, I want you to sing it. I said, if, if, if you're ready in a week, are you ready in a month, you ready, no, it better not take no months. So you know, I want you to go ahead and sing it, amen. But uh, I want to preach on the, the potter's wheel when she sings that. Um, I'm Thank God he knows how to mold us and make us and bend us into what he wants us to be. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful. Um, there's a lot of different angles. You can look at the potter's wheel. Um, I know you've heard the potter's wheel preached upside and down another. Amen. Come on, help somebody. I mean, it, I, but I can promise you if, I, if God, when he puts it, on, puts it on me, I've already got some thoughts. I've preached on it many times before, and God will always give you something new to say if you'll seek him in it. Amen. I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful... Let me go ahead and say this before I forget this morning. I was back there thinking I looked and seen the back of Miss Shirley's head this morning, sitting up here bobbing around. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful that she's feeling better. Miss Shirley's been under the weather a little bit. I'm glad that, I'm glad that you're feeling better. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for you and keep you lifted up. And everybody else that's been sick and been dealing with things, we're going to continue to pray for you. But DJ, good to see you in the service this morning. This young man right here has been through it. I pray for you. This church prays for you. And I'm just glad to see you. Uh, I, I, it surprised me to see you walking around as good as you are today, brother. And what you've been through, surgery on his leg again. Not only one time, they had to go back and do it again. And I'm, I'm glad to see you up mobile. And I, and I understand that he he had, was part of the mess. And then got the lights in the in the fellowship building out there uh, Saturday. We got lights, so y'all been wanting light to paint. So and I got the paint, so y'all have at it. Amen. Ladies been chomping at the bit about painting out there, so. Uh, and I'll say this, and I'm going to shut up. If you need some paint, you better go find it right now. There is a paint shortage. I do not know that. Can't even get no paint at Sherwin Williams. Amen. Uh, we found some at Lowe's, so we got some paint, and they'll be started painting out there next week. And the work continues. Amen. Amen. If y'all want to have a Thanksgiving dinner, you better be glad the work continues. Amen. 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 But I'll leave that alone. But I'm thankful. Thankful so so good to see you this morning, brother. Thanks for it. It warm my heart to see you walk in this morning. And everybody else has been sick and been going through, and I don't want to miss nobody or nothing, but, but we're going to continue to pray that God completely heals them. We're so glad to see y'all over, Miss, Miss Paul and, and, and Brother. I want to, I, every time I look at him, I want to call him Kenneth, amen. But, I, but I, Brother Keith, I'm going to tell you who I really want to call him. Y'all get me on, y'all, y'all get me on a video saying this. Is that not John Walton sitting over there? If I got a witness. <laughs> Every time I see Brother Keith, I, I hear that in the back of my head. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> For the first time I ever seen him, I said, he reminded me of him. You're right, you're right. That was a good man. So that's, that is a compliment. But it's amazing how much we look like somebody sometimes. Amen. So you might become Brother John around here instead of Brother Keith. Amen. <laughs> I done called you out. But I love y'all and I'm glad that y'all are getting better. And everybody's been sick and dealing. Everybody's been dealing with COVID. Miss Kathy. So good to see you up and mobile and getting around like you are. Ain't, ain't dragging that oxygen around no more. The Love family back there on the back been dealing with COVID and everybody just been sick. And, and, and brother, you're just a blessing every time I see you coming across the parking lot and what you've been through. And just, it's, it's just, I'm just, I'm just thankful for the, for the healing that's going on. And, you know, we don't know why we get sick, don't know why things come along, but we know who helps us get through it. Amen. Well, that's right. But God, amen. But God has always got a plan. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, and I hope and pray that you do, um, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Exodus this morning. Exodus. And I'm going to try not to be long. I'm going to try to get us going through this. So I got about an eight-hour sermon. Amen. I'm going to try to pack it in three hours. Amen. 
I'm just kidding. Amen. But I do have a word that uh, I preached on this. I mean, I guess I, I could honestly say the things I preached, I've preached on a lot of this stuff before, but God's given me thoughts and gives me things that run through my mind, and I just, I, I just feel like I have a word for somebody here this morning in this story. Um, and if you're still looking for Exodus this morning, if you ain't found it yet, amen, I'm going to invite you to come to Sunday school next Sunday, amen. <laughs> That's the second book of the Bible, amen. Don't look too long. I'm just kidding. Exodus chapter number 6 this morning. Look down at chapter number 6. Exodus chapter number 6. The Bible says in verse number 1, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now thou shalt see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land, drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared to Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. By the name of God Almighty, but my name Jehovah was I not known to thee. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan and the land of their pilgrimage wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard of the groanings of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Verse number 6 reads, Wherefore, Wherefore, I say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be your, to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord of your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Verse number 8 reads, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish right here. And I will bring you into the land concerning to which I did swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, God, so much. God, for the printed word this morning. God, I thank you so much, Father, for what you show us and teach us in your written word. Father, God, I just love you this morning. God, I lift you up, God, that you would be exalted above all this morning, Father. God, hide me. God, speak through me. And God, help your people this morning. God, we're here. We're attentive. We listen, God. We just, God, we're seeking you in a time of so much need in a, in a world, Father, that's just dying and going to hell. And we don't know which way to turn. But God, in those times, we're going to keep looking toward the heaven. And God, put all our hope in you. God, I love you. And I thank you. And it's all in the name of Jesus that we do everything. Jesus Christ, amen and amen. And thank you. You may be seated, but on your way to your seat, find you a good neighbor. Look at them like you're getting ready to take a picture. Look at them like you're happy this morning. Come on, hit me. Look at them like everything's all right, amen. Just look at them and smile and tell them, Brother Frank, he needs your prayers. He needs all your amens. He needs a little bit of shouting. He needs a spur stuck in his side. He'll buck if you'll, if you'll spur him, amen. I need your help this morning. I want to I wanna talk this morning just from a, I, I preached one time from this message about a heavy heart, this, this text, not this message, but this text I preached one time about having a heavy heart. But this morning I'm going to look at this same scripture and I want to talk about hope. I want to talk about hope this morning. Grass withers and the flower fadeth away, but the word of our Lord shall last and stand forever. Amen. Woo, you ought to get happy about that. That's my, one of my, mm, I, I can't say that I have a favorite verse, but I do have a top five and a top ten, and, and, and that verse is in my top five, and that's the reason why I quote it every time before I preach. I want to start by saying, and th this comes to mind, and I, I've said this many, many, many times before, but have you, have you ever just had one of them days? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't look at nobody right now. But have you ever had one of them days where you just it, 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 you just wanted to say some things that you didn't want to say? I mean, there's some things that felt like it was coming. It's just one of them days. I mean, I mean, I don't know what the best way to put it, but I guess I want to say one of those days where nothing seems to go right. I mean, nothing. 
feel like you're running behind all day. I mean, nothing's going as planned. I mean, you thought it'd work out this way. It's just one of those days. It's just one of those days. Here you did, Brother Andy. The race is done started, and you pull up and get ready to stay. It's Get staged in, do your burnout and all that kind of thing. Then the car cut off and won't run. One of them days. One of those days. Brother Lewis, you can't keep it in the fairway. No matter how hard you hit it and how long you hit it and everything. Just one of those days. Y'all know, I'm just trying to be real. I know I know we got racers in here. I know we got golfers. And I know we got, well, I ain't going to say what else. Amen. But uh, God help us this morning. But but you can't you, you can't keep your head above water. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just one of those days. I mean, I don't know, y'all ain't got to say, man, I have them all the time. I have those days all the time. I mean, it's just one of those days where it's one thing after another. I can't find nothing. I can't get it together. I can't keep it together when I get it together, amen. I mean, I can't find a remote. I was trying to cut the TV off last night so I could finish up my little sermon notes I was working on. Let me tell you, I went to bed and was, I don't know if she was watching. I guess that's the reason why I put on all this black. She was watching Johnny Cash last night, amen. She was watching that movie. Every time it comes on, I don't know who fights over the remote more, her team, uh, Taylor, to watch the, that, that story of Johnny Cash's life. But anyway, I guess I'm, I'm the man in black this morning. Amen. Can't beat him, join him. Amen. If I got a witness. <laughs> but you try so hard. You try so hard to keep your head above water. Nothing goes right. You can't find nothing. I was looking for the remote. I couldn't find I was looking for my truck key this morning. I mean, just, just, just nothing was going right. I mean, had one of those days where you can't even figure out what you want to cook. You got a refrigerator full of stuff, but don't nothing sound good. I mean, got a cabinet full. Of, look, we blessed. We got a freezer full. Y'all got a freezer full. We had to try to decide what we're going to eat. Amen. You're blessed. I bet most of you, look, you, you, went, in the, you went and opened your closet this morning, looked in and had to decide what you was going to wear. Try to figure out what you, we are blessed, amen, but sometimes we don't feel blessed. Sometimes things don't make us, the world don't make it look blessed to us. I mean, we can't, we can't figure out what we want, can't figure out what we want to eat, can't figure out what we want to wear, and anything and everybody is getting on your nerves. Have I got a witness? Amen. It's just one of those days. I just want to talk about one of those days. And brothers and sisters, the, the text, the scripture that I just shared with you, that's where Israel is right now. Israel is right there. The Bible says for over 400 years, they've been in Egypt. Listen to me. They, 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 they come there as honored and privileged guests of Egypt's Pharaoh at the behest of Joseph, the Bible says. But now the Pharaoh's in power who does not know Joseph or Joseph's God. Sound like the world we live in now? I shared a post on Facebook yesterday. I, don't, I mean, it, it just kind of struck a nerve in me. It was so true, amen. The world was so caught up and worried about a pandemic. Don't fear God, not one bit. That's exactly where they are. He ain't worried about God. He ain't fearing God, not one bit. And for 400 years, they have been enslaved under brutal taskmasters, under brutal circumstances and conditions, hard days and difficult nights, working and making brick. They said that there was no straw, no means to make brick, and they made brick anyway labored all the time. They had to go to bed every night, every day, every evening, every night on stained pillars crying and moaning that God would send somebody to deliver them. Ever been there where you just cried out to God, God, I need something, I need something, I need something? Oh, yes. And like I said, thank God it don't stay right there. The Bible says God lets Moses be born to the son of Yoshebed and Hamram. And, 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 and he was born at a time when Pharaoh... Y'all know the story had, had decreed that all Egyptian boys should be drowned in the Nile River. I'm going to need one or two Bible readers to help me get right through here and we're going to take off. Amen. But when Moses is born, the midwives see that God's hand is upon him. Oh, ain't you glad that somebody can see God's hand still in this day? Amen. Ain't you glad that God's hand still on people? But they seen and they noticed that God's hand was upon him and rather than to do what he said, to drown him in the Nile River, Throw him out there for the crocodiles to eat up and all this kind of stuff. His mother fashions a basket of bulrush and pitch and floats him. Not throw him, but floats him in the Nile waters. And it's just like God. Amen. He's always got a plan. God allows Pharaoh's daughter out of the house of Pharaoh to come to the Nile River to take a bath. Now, when you do a little study, this, this, this was nothing but the hand of God because when you look back and you do a little run, uh, understanding, they was running water. Hot and cold in Pharaoh's house. I don't know how to heat it. I don't know what it done, but I've just been reading. I've been studying a little bit. I mean, they was running water hot and cold in Pharaoh's house. 
And God moves. Whew. Hey, man, God moves on Pharaoh's daughter to go down. Don't just leave the house. Just go down to the Nile to take a bath. And at the right moment, God just kind of reached over there and shook that thing. Can you imagine just the, the basket just shook? And that baby started crying right at the right time. And Pharaoh's daughter is moved. She's moved by that cry of the baby. And not only is she moved, God does something else. God has stationed somebody right in the right place at the right time. And Miriam, watch this, and Miriam says to Pharaoh's daughter, would you like me to go find a nurse? Would you like me to go find somebody to nurse this baby, to take care of this baby? And Pharaoh's daughter sends Miriam to go get a nurse. And Miriam comes back with Moses' mama. Amen. Oh, yes. God's always got a plan. Amen. He's always got a plan. She comes back with Moses' own mother to take care of her own child. And the Bible says she raises him in the courts of Egypt in the splendor of Pharaoh's house. Now, Pharaoh said he had to die. And now he's being raised in the same house. Amen. You're going to think God ain't got a plan. Amen. Come on, help me somebody. He's schooled. He, he's learned in Egyptian knowledge. But mama, thank God mama was around because she gets it over to him that even though you might be up there with them, you're still one of us. You are not one of them. You are one of us. Now, Brothers and sisters, let me pause right here for a minute. Let me pull over right quick. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even going to put it in. I'm just going to leave it in dry and keep my foot on the gas. We ought to tell our children today, especially with these crazy jacked up folks trying to run this country now. I'm going to leave it alone right there. I don't preach politics. I'm just, I had to say that. I wish I had time to stay there. But catch me out on the porch. We need to tell our kids, wait on God. Don't worry about all this. Wait on God. I wish I had time to stay there. He does not wait on God. Pharaoh going to do things his way. He don't even know who God is. Now, he does not wait on God. And I have said this many times before. This stuck in my ministry, in my mind, in my ministry, early, early, early in the years. Worse than not waiting on God is later on wishing you would have waited on God. There have been many times in my life I got ahead of the, 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 the cart, way ahead of the wagon, I mean the, of the horse, amen. Wishing I'd have waited on God. That's a bad place to be, knowing that God had another plan. But Moses, he sees a fellow Hebrew, the Bible says, being abused. And he takes matters into his own hands. And the Bible says he kills an Egyptian soldier and buries his body in the sand. And some days later, there's some Hebrew boys fighting, and he tries to separate them. And you know what they say. Y'all help me right here. You're going to kill us like you killed them? You're going to do the same thing to us you've done to him? And, and Moses, who is adopted, he's the adopted grandson of Egypt Pharaoh, is now running. He's a fugitive from Egyptian justice. He's on the run. The Bible says he winds up. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Y'all just stay with me. I just got to get us there. The Bible says he winds up on the backside of the Midian Desert. And while there, sometimes you got to go through a lot. But while he's there, when he gets there, God has him exactly, finally, where he wants him. God has him in a place where he knows that he can work on it. And my brothers and sisters, that could be you today. That could be us today. Amen. That could be us. That you're wondering and walking around in a solitary place. You're wondering and walking around. It looks like the trouble. Or it looks like the situation or the circumstances you're in right now is going to be endless. It just keeps on coming. And you think that you're going to never come out of this thing whole and better. There ain't going to ever be another side of it I'm going to get through. But God, oh yes, yes, God has you there. Not to destroy you, brothers and sisters. Not in this time of place where God has got you where he wants you and working on you. He does not have you there to let Satan destroy you. God is not going to destroy you, but God's going to develop you right there. That's what God's going to do. God's going to do the work. He's going to develop you right there. And God cannot develop you, brothers and sisters, 
until he brings you into the wilderness. Sometimes you got to go through for God to do the work in you because you would never do it no other way. And somebody sitting in here this morning, you might be in the wilderness or you've had some wilderness experience in your life and you'll help me testify right here that it was only when I went through that dark time, that dark season of my life, did I really see the hand of God working in my life. Because I had too much stuff going on out here I was taking care of. But when I went through that dark time, when I went through that jacked up season in my life, when I didn't know which way to turn, I turned to Him and I began to see God's hand working in my situation. Amen? Only when I did not realize which way to turn. I didn't know up from down. I didn't know which way to go. That's the only time that I recognized, amen, that if the Lord didn't get me through, if the Lord didn't bring me through, that was supposed to be the end of my situation. I had to go through that time. You're going to have to go through those times. I hate to say this again, but I got to. I said it last week, a week before last. Be careful. Matter of fact, let me tell you right now, turn the TV off. Stop listening to that syrupy, cotton candy style preaching. Amen? Come on, help me somebody right here. Stop getting excited about that syrupy stuff that makes you feel good. Amen? The kind of preaching that tells you what you want to hear. There's a lot of preachers ain't going to tell you you're going to ever go through anything. I'm going to tell you right now, before you get to heaven, you've got to walk through a little bit of hell. Amen? If i got a witness, you're going to have hell on this earth. You're going to have tribulation. You need somebody to tell you you're going to go through that stuff but keep trusting God through it. Now, it tells you exactly what you want to hear, though. It gets on my nerves. I ain't going to call no names right now. But that stuff will get on your nerves, amen. I mean, it, it, it'll build up your self-esteem in yourself and build up your self-esteem, amen. But it is not going to carry you through the, the midnight hour. It's not going to get you through. That gospel is really sweet. Woo, it feels good. Oh, prosperity, feel good. Oh, yeah, but just sow a seed. I mean, give me $1,000, you'll get $10,000. It don't work that way. Quit listening to that stuff, amen. And if you keep eating it, I done told you it's going to rot your teeth out and you ain't going to be able to chew, amen. So when something hard comes along in your life, if you had not been listening to some sound doctrine, amen, you're not going to be able to chew on nothing hard. Now, God is not trying to destroy you. I'll leave that alone. He's trying to develop you. And he cannot develop you, brothers and sisters, until he brings you through something. You've got to go through something for God to develop something on the inside. Amen. And I need somebody right here, right quick right here, somebody to holler back at the preacher this morning to help me testify. I'm stronger because of what I have already been through. Amen. I can take some more now. I can take a little more heavy load now because of what I've already been through. I've seen God deliver me on the other side. And if he done it then, I'm going to trust he's going to do it again. Amen. Look, don't worry about what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know why I got such a loud hallelujah. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Well, we are more, the Bible says, than conquerors. Amen. God will fight your battle. God will be faithful. God will carry you through. But you got to let him take you through. You got to let him. You got to let him. Not only you got to let him take you through, I added one more word on it. You got to let him take you through something that you cannot handle yourself. Moses, the Bible says Moses sees a bush on fire, but the bush is not being consumed. Think about this. And he draws near to this unusual sight. He's watching it in God. The Bible says that God speaks to him through this burning bush. And he says, Moses, I've heard the cries of my people by reason of their taskmasters. I've heard all that stuff. Now, at this time, right now is the time. Right now, I am going to come down and deliver them. I'm going to deliver them. Oh, yeah, somebody ought to get happy right now. He said, I'm going to deliver them right now. Right now, right now, I'm going to come down and deliver them. But I need you to do something right quick first. I need you to do something. I need you to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I need a Bible reader. Help me right through here, y'all. And Moses don't want to go. Y'all remember the story. He don't want to go. But Moses argues with God because he has a speech impediment. He can't speak well. He don't talk well. So he argues with God about this. And he says, who am I? You remember when God called you to do something? I know I looked at God and said, who in the world am I? God, you would have me to do such a thing. I mean, who am I? Have you ever been there? Ever thought about that in your mind? You know, God, who am I? And that's the same situation that Moses is in. He said, God, who am I to go to a mighty Pharaoh 
And God says, look, just open your mouth. You just go open your mouth, and I will speak for you. And Moses says, look, Lord, can you just hear this conversation? He said, look, Lord, won't you just send my brother Aaron? He's well. He can speak. He can talk good. He speaks a lot better than I do. I think the word he used was Aaron is more elegant. He got more better. I don't know how to say that, but he got better speech than I can. He can talk better than me. Amen. I'm not no English professor or nothing. I don't know all them words. But God, God says, I said for you to go down to Egypt. I don't need your brother to go down. I need you to go down to Egypt. I'm going to say it one more time. God said for you. You fill in the blank. God said for you to do it. Amen. And, and the Bible says that Moses finally relents. He finally relents. And he says to God, if I should go, God, if I'm going, the people, they're going to want to know who you are <laughs> and what's your name. Somebody help me right here. God said, tell them, I am that I am. In other words, this is what God's saying. I am that I am. This is what he's saying. Whatever you need, I am. Mm. Whatever you need to be accomplished, whatever you need to accomplish, whatever you need done, I am. When you get in trouble, I am. When you're broke and ain't got two nickels, Tina holler back at us, amen, amen. When you ain't got nothing to rub together, amen, I am. <laughs> when you get tired, I am. When you get confused, I thought about that thing you said the other night. We was riding home late and Tina said, I'm seeing cross eyes. They're going back to sleep. Amen. But when you get confused, don't know which way to see, and you can't turn and don't know what's going on, I am. Just go back to sleep. Amen. I am. When you get bewildered, I am. I am. Whatever you see around you, whatever you need accomplished and be done in your life, he is saying, I am. I am the one. I am. Because listen, in the text, he says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew me as Almighty God. I'm in your Bible. I'm right here. I'm right dead up in the Bible right here. But the Scripture says they never knew me as Jehovah. Listen to me. They knew me as Almighty God, but they never knew me as Jehovah. Somebody get happy with me right here in just a minute. Jehovah. In all his aspects. I know y'all know it. Y'all studied it. Y'all talked about it the other week or a while back in y'all's ladies' Bible study. Y'all was talking about it. I even got in on that conversation with you one night, Tina. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Sikkanu. Jehovah Shamar. Amen. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Rohi. Whatever situation, whatever you need God to be, amen, that's what he'll become. Amen. Whatever you need. Oh, I could go through five or six pages. There's hundreds of names for God. There's hundreds. There's hundreds. There's many, 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 many names. Oh, brothers and sisters, when you walk with the Lord, when you spend time with Him, I said when you walk with the Lord, I said when you spend time with Him, I mean, when you walk with Him, you ought not have just a textbook knowledge of God. You ought not just read your Bible to get an understanding about God. There ought to be some other reasons you know about Him. You ought not walk around talking about it. Don't get me wrong, it's good to testify about what you've seen God do in other people's lives. But you ought not just walk around talking about, well, God done this for them. I mean, God done that. Look, look, God, look God ought to know your name. There ought to be a situation that you can talk about what God's done in your life. Amen? Somebody been sick. God Brought you out. Amen. Oh, my heart had more amens right. I've been sick as we've been around here. Amen. Somebody been sick and God brought you out. Amen. And when he reveals himself to you in that particular, that situation, amen, that's who he's going to become to you or for you. Y'all going to help me right here? Somebody who's been out. God brought you in. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. Somebody has been on the outside. Amen. God brought you in. You've been down. But God will pick you up. Come on, help me right here. God has picked you up. Amen. I said God picked you up. You didn't pick yourself up. You didn't get out of that by yourself. You might think you did, but if it hadn't been for Almighty God, you'd still be wallowing in that. God brought you out of that. Amen. He picked you up. You, you were lost. God come seen about you. God come found you. God picked you up out of the miry clay. Oh, I could talk right there for a minute. God revealed himself to you in that particular situation, another level, another layer, amen, another dimension of his personality. 
Whatever you need him to be, I am. You need him to be a provider, I am. You need him to be a friend, I am. You need him to be a $20 bill, I am. God will provide. I'm telling you, he'll show up. He'll do these things in your life. The scripture says, if you faint in the day, in the day of diversity, you know what it says right here. It's because your strength is small. How strong are you this morning? If you run with a footman, and they weary you. Oh, I wish I had a witness right here. And they weary you. How can you contend with horses? If you can't make it in the land where the peace and prosperity abide, what in the world are you going to do with the swelling of the joints? What are you going to do when, when it really comes up against you? And God sent Moses to Pharaoh. And y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. Nine times Pharaoh hardened his heart. But on the tenth time, he didn't have to harden it. God hardened it for him. Amen. And he just finally decided to let these people go. But God, oh, here it is again, Miss Shirley. You set the tone this morning. But God is getting ready to do something. Right here in verse number one, he says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, I will show you what I'm going to do to your enemy. You don't do anything. You don't do nothing right here. I will show you who I am. I've given you my name. I am that I am. Now I'm about to show you who I am. Oh, my, I ought to have an amen right there. Listen, you don't have to fight your enemy. You don't have to fight no battle by yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, put on some armor and walk through some stuff. But you ain't got to be the one doing the fighting. You ain't got to be the one doing the swinging. Amen. Look, don't, 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 don't hate them because they hate you. Don't keep disliking them just because they dislike you or be ugly to them because they're ugly to you. Just stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Because when you ain't got nothing, I mean, when you ain't got nothing in your past that you've done wrong to nobody and they're still coming against you, God's going to take care of you. God will take care of you. Now watch. I'm just saying that. Just say this. Watch. God said, watch what I'm getting ready to do to Pharaoh. He says, with a strong hand. He said, with a strong hand, he'll let them go. And God says, when I get through with Pharaoh, He's going to drive y'all out of Egypt. Amen. Now, y'all ain't got to ask. He's going to push y'all out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll drive you out. I wish I had time to stay right there. But, whoo. Mm. God will take care of every situation. But the folk who never come to church, they just, I don't know. I, 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 let me see. I'm trying to wrap my mind around what I'm trying to say right here. The people that feel like you don't, and here it is. The people that feel like you don't have to come to church every Sunday. I tell people all the time, they say, well, I ain't got to go to church every Sunday. I say, you're right, you ain't, you ain't got to. But you ain't going to get a home on your couch once you get sitting in this chair on Sunday morning. I can promise you that right now. I can serve God at home. Well, yeah, you can to a certain extent. But you know what? That's, that, 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 that's like saying to God, well, God, I might show up. But just wait on me. I'm going to say this. I've said it many times before. God knows how to send enough stuff your way. God knows how to send enough trouble your way to drive you to church. You ain't, look, you ain't got to make up your mind, God, to get you to church. Amen. Well, but Frank, when I get there, y'all loud. Y'all cut up. Y'all make a lot of noise. I'm not emotional. I, 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 don't, I just like to sit here and just, just okay, sit there and pout if you want to. Amen. I don't make a lot of noise. I'm quiet. That's just who I am. So y'all still quiet. Amen. God knows how to send enough stuff into your life to drive you to open up even your mouth. I ain't got a pump project. God will make you open your mouth. Amen. And somebody ought to help me right here. I mean, I used to be quiet. And I was. I sat in a dead Baptist church for many years. Amen. I was scared. I mean, you could hear a chigger sneeze. Amen. I'm talking about it was quiet in there. Y'all know the other one. I'll go ahead and say it too. It was so quiet that you hear a rat peeing on a piece of cotton in the, in the attic. Amen. And that's quiet. I don't care what you say. That is quiet right there. That's quiet. But I ain't scared to open my mouth now. Amen. I used to be quiet. I used to be reserved. I used to be laid back. Oh, yeah. But when you've been through so much, and God brought you through to the other side. Amen. And God's opened up a red sea in front of you. It's hard to sit there and be quiet. Amen. 
I ain't even got to come to church to get happy no more. I get happy all by myself. I mean, I, I ain't got to be sitting on no row in no revival. I mean, when I think about what God's done in my life and the ways he's made, amen, the prayers he's answered, the way, whoo, I just holler all by myself. I be riding down the road and just start hollering, amen. I shout when I'm by myself because, uh, look, I shout in my truck because I remember when I didn't have no truck, amen. Look, God's been good to me because I remember what all he's done in my life, amen. Is there anybody, in, I said, is there anybody in here this morning know how to thank God for the little stuff that he's done in your life? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hey, he's done a lot for us. He's done a lot. He says, our text this morning, our text. I try to put this together just right just so y'all know. That he really knows. He just don't get up and holler and shout. I try to put this together right so y'all can say, well, he, he knows how to put it together. So just stay with me. I got some points right here. Our text, our text verse this morning is verse number six. And I can't help it. I'm shouting before we get to the end. Ain't, this ain't shouting time. You know what? Don't you get like, Have you ever been in a church when they, oh, it ain't shouting time right now. They're getting loud over there in that section. I've been in churches like that. It ain't time to shout right now. You need to be quiet. Hey! That's what I tell them. <laughs> when you think about what he's done, amen. Oh, let it go when it comes. Amen. Don't hold it down. I can't help it, but I shout before I get to where the shouting time is. But we got, we got a shouting point here in just a second. Our text is in verse number 6. And I'm, I want to get down to, I want to not only verse 6, but I want to get into 7 and 8. Y'all going to help me get down to 7 and 8? Okay, here we go. Brothers and sisters, in verse number 6, the Bible says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am. He is the Lord. Amen. Woo, hey, I like that right. I am is the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you, watch this, of their bondage. Here's the first one. I ain't got 12 this morning. Here's the first one. God cares about your frustrations. He cares about you being frustrated. He cares about that frustration and those things you go through. God cares about that because in verse number one, he talks about both burdens and bondage. Not just one, he talks about both of them, the burdens and the bondage. And let me go ahead and stop and put pause in the church right there just a minute. There's a difference between burdens and bondage. There's a huge difference. But both of them, watch this, burdens and bondage, both of them cause frustrations. Burdens are the things that trouble us. Our worries, our concerns. We're concerned over our children. We're concerned over our aging parents. We're concerned over our job, things going on in the job. We're concerned about our health. And, 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 and those concerns, they burden us. They burden us on the inside. But there's a difference, brothers and sisters, between a burden and bondage. Bondage, on the other hand, are those things that control us. Mm, God help us right here. Mm, burdens mm, and bondage. Bondage, bondage is the things that control us. Even the things that control us, we oftentimes get ourselves into. Mm. Oh, yes. Y'all ain't got to say nothing right here. I mean, the, the, look, look, look. Burdens are the things that trouble us. But bondage, whoo, oh, my. We let people control us. We let substance, we let things control us. We let sin Oh, God, help us, right? We let sin control us. Oh, yes, right here. We let attitudes control us. Bondage. Bondage, brothers. We are in bondage to stuff, watch this, that we have no business being around or by. We're in bondage. But both bondage, bondage and burdens, they both frustrate. But the Scripture says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Woo. That word care. Oh, yes, I love that word care. It just means to throw it all in. Just throw it all on him. And keep on throwing, not just keep, one time, keep on throwing it all on God. Keep on throwing it all on Jesus. Just keep on when it comes. Just, just, just every time it comes up, throw it on him. What a friend. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege. Woo, what a privilege it is to carry everything 
to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, yeah, what a friend we have in Jesus. All, 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 all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Everything, everybody, every circumstance, every situation, every condition, every stress, every struggle, every strain, every sickness, take it to God in prayer. God cares, brothers and sisters. I said God cares, amen, about your frustration. Don't ever, don't ever hide anything from God. <laughs> As though you could in the first place. But we're real good about hiding our stuff, our stuff from one another. Mm. When you're going through, when you got trouble in your life, most people don't want nobody to know they're going through. I'm just checking on y'all, amen. You sick. And don't want nobody to know you're sick. You got to tell somebody, amen. If you're sick, tell somebody you're sick. You struggling? Tell somebody you're struggling. I mean, now you ain't got to just come blurt it out in front of the church. But tell some praying brother or sister in your life, tell them what you're struggling with or you got an issue you need them to pray about. If you're depressed, tell somebody you're depressed. Talk to somebody. Look, you don't want nobody to know you're struggling. You don't want nobody to know you're sick. You don't, want, you don't even want nobody to know what you're struggling with, amen. But when I'm sick, brothers and sisters, I don't care, I don't care who's praying, what they're praying, whatever. I want somebody praying for me. And I'm going to tell somebody I need a prayer getting through somebody, somebody, amen. I don't care if you go out on the street and talk to somebody. I don't care if it's somebody in the church house. I don't care who it is, amen. I want somebody praying for me, and I'm going to tell them about it, amen. I need somebody that can get a prayer through. And some people got have a way better ability to get the prayer through way quicker than I can. Amen? Some people just, they're just hooked up like that. Some people just talk to God all the time. And it's just like the channel is just wide open all the time. I need somebody praying for me when I got trouble. Sickness. Depression. Struggles in my life. Amen? And I would much rather my church folk be praying for me. But when they, if they can't, I want somebody. But look, what I'm trying to point, I'm trying to make, can't nobody pray for you, pray for your situation if they don't even know you got one. You got to take something to somebody for them to pray about. So you can't get mad. You can't get mad. If ain't nobody praying for you, they don't know about it. Come on, help me somebody. That's why we family. Tell somebody about it. You have brothers and sisters in Christ. But if you can't share it with them, if it's something that just, just, just so heavy, such a burden that you can't share with them, I know somebody. I say, I know somebody. I'm going to say it one more time. If you can't tell me, I know somebody you can tell. Amen. And look, you need to cast all that care on him. You need to pour it all out on him. And I can promise you one thing. He will not discuss it with nobody. Hey, I mean, come on, help me right here. Brothers and sisters, he cares about your frustration. But in that same verse, he cares about your freedom. He cares about the, you, you, you being free. It's right here. It's, all, it's right here in verse number 6. Verse number 6. I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and great judgment. Not only does God care about your frustration, God cares about your freedom. He cares about your freedom. That word redeem is the same word for freedom. God redeemed Israel through the blood of the Lamb. Woo. You set that tone with that blood, sister, this morning. Hey, through the blood of the Lamb. Now, when God finally got Pharaoh to move, when he finally hardened his heart, amen, Pharaoh's heart, the last plague, y'all know the story, the last plague that God uses was the one that Pharaoh caused for himself. He's the one that started. Pharaoh said that every firstborn male of the Jews was going to be put to death. And when he said that, he sealed his own fate. He sealed it right there. God spoke to Moses and said, tell the children of Israel, tonight the deaf angel will fly over Egypt. Oh, I wish I had a witness right here. But tell every house, tell every house to get a lamb without spot or blemish and sprinkle the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lintels. And tonight when the deaf angel flies over, Every house, whoo, not just one, but every house, amen, that has the blood sprinkled on it, 
The deaf angel going to fly over, going to pass by. Oh, I wish I had some help to preach right here. And if you're here today, brothers and sisters, it's because the blood of Jesus, amen, has already been applied, amen, because the blood of Jesus woo, kept the danger, deaf angel out of your house last night, amen. It just had to pass on by. And look, he, he might have flew by, but he had to pay. He had to pass by. He flew over, but he couldn't come in, amen. He might have flew by and looked in and seen your TV on, but he had to keep on flying, amen, because you were covered. I said you were covered by the blood. Oh, I love that text. He told him to take that blood and put it on the lentils in the doorpost. And I like what he told him to do with a lamb. He said to eat it. Amen? I got a Bible reading. He said, sprinkle the blood on the doorpost and lentils and eat the lamb. Not only do they have blood on the outside, they have blood on the inside. Amen? Whoa, hey! That's a whole other sermon right there. But you're not here this morning because you've been so holy. You're not here because you got it all right. Amen. You're here because the Lord kept you. Amen. And you look, you ain't here because you kept the Lord's commandments so well. We've all done busted them all to pieces. Amen. You're here because the Lord has looked after you. Look, anybody who is saved is not saved by no kind of works. Amen. You're not saved by being in the baptism. You're not saved by nothing you do other than calling on the name of Jesus Christ. You're not saved by your righteous conduct. You were saved because God redeemed you, amen, by His blood. And the Scripture says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Indeed. Free indeed. God cares about the frustration. God cares about the freedom. Ooh, here we are on verse number 7. God cares about your fellowship. God cares about fellowship. And I will take you to me for a people. I want you to get this, brothers and sisters. I want you to get this. We did not choose him. He chose us. Don't miss that this morning. We did not choose him. He chose us. Oh, I ought to have one or two more shadows right there. Amen. Because ain't none of us have enough sense to choose him. None of us. Ain't none of us had enough sense to choose you. You'd still be out there in your sin, sinful lifestyle way and everything in the world if God didn't choose you. We never would have chose him. Amen. I think every sinner in here help me testify right here. I ain't had sense enough to choose him because I was too caught up and I was too happy in doing what I wanted to do. Have I got a witness? Every Look, every sinner in here was satisfied in your sin. You like what you was doing? Come on, somebody say amen right here. Don't get quiet. This ain't the time to quiet. Don't look at nobody else. Just look at yourself right now. Look, every sinner, look, you were satisfied in your sin at that time in your life. And some real honest folk will help me testify. Every sin that I committed back then, I enjoyed every one of them. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'll preach by myself. Amen. Everything I done back then, I enjoyed doing it. Come on, y'all, help me somebody. Because it don't make no sense to sin if you ain't going to enjoy it. Y'all don't want to see, y'all don't see nobody this this morning. I was content. I mean, I was content. I run them two words together. I was content outside the will of Christ in my life. I was content over there. I was until Jesus chose me. Amen. And you was too. But he just decided to come find me. He just decided to come find you. And thank God you didn't have to clean your nasty self up, amen, for him to come get you. God stepped right in that mess, right in, the, right in that jacked up situation, right in, right in the middle of it, amen, and called you. And you ain't never been the same since. Now, I ain't going to say we don't mess up. I ain't saying that we don't do some things we ought not do. See how quiet it got right? I'm the only one. Whether I have preachers say still seen. Yeah, I say some things. Yeah, I think some things. Yeah, I think, we all do. You don't want you don't think you'll think something and say something up under your breath. Just ride with me one morning to Atlanta, Georgia. But Bobby, help me testify right there. What did I tell you the other night? We rode all the way to Athens. We, we left Athens and went to Athens. I just laughed about that. We went to the Athens, Tennessee and sung the other night. We went across through the country seeing all that beautiful stuff. I said, I ain't coming back that way tonight, though. Mm -mm. Got on the big road, come down. We rode all the way down 75. 
I could tell you as soon as Tina did, I'm going to line them down right here. You could tell as soon as you got back around Atlanta. Something will break Atlanta. Just, oh, I mean, you can tell. And don't think that stuff won't make you get in the flesh. Let me keep moving. God chose you. And brothers and sisters, that's something to shout about this morning. In my foolishness, he chose me. In your foolishness. Don't look at nobody. He chose you, amen. In my, in my sinful state, amen, God still chose, in my waywardness, way out under somewhere, God still chose me, amen. Now hear me, brothers and sisters. I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which brings you out from under the burdens of the, of the Egyptian. He cares about your frustration. He cares about your freedom. God cares about your fellowship. He cares about your fellowship. He wants you to, whew, God wants you to be with Him. God wants to be in fellowship with you and wants you to be in fellowship with Him. And to show you how much He wants you, He comes seen about you. He come and got you. Oh, yes. The scripture says he adopts you. You were not born into the family because none of us that I know of, none of us are Jew or Jewish or Jews by bloodline. We are adopted and grafted into the family. We're adopted in. Now, when you have a child, Amen. Go on, sing the invitation. Boy, it's all right, brother. It's okay. It ain't bother me. Amen. I like it. But when you have a child, when you have a baby, when it comes time to leave the hospital, you 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 got to take him home. Taylor, when you were born, I had no choice. I had to bring you home. Amen. They said you could. Said, look, look, you ain't got to go home. You can't stay here no more. No, I'm just kidding. But when you have a child, you, you have to take that child home with you. But when you adopt a child, oh my, you get, mm, mm, you go get them, and you choose to bring them home. Oh, mm. Somebody going to help me preach right in a minute. God came and got me and brought me to be with him. God came and got me. God came, God, God chose, God come and got me and brought me to be with him. Now let me see if I can make it even plain. God, God used the afflictions of Israel to bring them closer to him. God made sure they would see his power, experience his peace, and know his presence when the trials of life come. Oh, mm. I told you earlier, God's not trying to destroy you. God's trying to develop you. God's trying to develop you. Great faith whoo, is shaped, brothers and sisters, on the anvil of affliction. I'm going to say that one more time. Great faith is shaped, it's developed, it's formed on the anvil of affliction. David said, it was good for me. He didn't say it was bad for me. He said it was good for me that I had been afflicted. Whoa, come on, help me somebody. Hear me, brothers and sisters. How will you know that God can fight if he never has to? Mm. Let me run it by you one more time. How will you ever know that God can fight if he never has to fight? I've said this before in some, in some shadow room. I'm going to check y'all out today. Because several folk didn't know what I'm talking about. Don't judge. Just, 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 just engage in the conversation. Remember when we used to go out years ago? Remember when we used to go to the club? Y'all know how to do all that too, amen? I've not seen some of y'all on the radio come up. I'm just trying to make it plain. Amen? I'm just trying to be real. Y'all said, you want real? That's all I am is real. Watch this. Remember when we used to do all that crazy stuff we used to do? 
Don't look at nobody. Some of y'all still getting on the church. God help us. Amen. Remember when you'd be there, be in a place where you weren't supposed to, and a fight would break out? Some of y'all been in some of them places like I've been in. Amen. Look, when the fight breaks out, I don't need you talking about, I'm just going to run on out the car and I'm going to start praying. No, I don't need that right now. No, I need you to get to pick up something. Amen. I need you to pick up a chair, a pool cue, a beer bottle. I need you to pick wine bottle, whatever you had sitting on the table. Amen. I need you to pick that thing up. Amen. And get in the fight with me. Come on, I'm just trying to be real. I don't want nobody when the fight starts, amen, talking about, oh, I'm going to pray right now. I ain't fighting. Look, there's a time to pray, and there's a time to fight. <laughs> and look, let me tell you something, amen. When I need somebody to fight for me, I need a God, amen. Oh, I said I need a God that I know knows how to fight, amen. And the reason I know he can fight is because he's already fought some battles before me in my past, amen. Anybody in here ever had God had to fight your battle? Won't he... Won't he fight it for you? Won't he? Well, hey, come on, help me somebody. Won't he do it one time? He'll do it again. He'll do it again and again. God will fight your battle. Just trying to prove the point. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Woo. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Oh, glory, your rod, amen, and your staff, they comfort me. Oh, yes, help me right here. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup. Hey, it's just running over. Surely, goodness and mercy. Oh, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light. And my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh just before they got to me, they stumbled and they fell. I waited patiently. Whoa, I wish I had a witness. I waited patiently upon the Lord. And he inclined his ear unto me. He took my feet. He took my foot out the mauri clay. Amen. And established them upon a rock. Oh, how will you know God can fight unless he has to? How will you ever know God knows how to fight unless he has to fight a battle for you? Brothers and sisters, I'm closing. He cares about your frustrations. He cares about your freedom. He, forget, he cares about your fellowship. And I'm closing. Here it is, last one. In verse number eight, where I want to get. He cares about your future. He cares about your future. And I will bring you into a land concerning to which I did swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob. And I will give it to you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. He cares about your future. If you don't shout about nothing else this morning, if you've been waiting all morning for a shout, you ain't opened your mouth yet, right here it is. In Deuteronomy, chapter number 6 and verse number 23. We've got a shout word right here. The same promise that God made for Israel it's the same promise he made to Frankie Cleveland this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The same promise God made to Israel in Deuteronomy, God made for everybody sitting in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Oh, yes. You ought to shout on this promise because God is no shorter, brothers and sisters, than his word. Amen. Whatever he says, he is not slack concerning his promise. God, I can promise you right now, God will do exactly what God said he will Amen. And the promise he made in Deuteronomy chapter number 6 is the same promise he's making to us this morning. He said, I brought you out so I could bring you in. He said, I brought you out so I could bring you in. That's the promise he made to Israel. He told Israel, I brought you out so I could bring you in. I brought you out. Of, come on, Brother Richard, I'm closing right here. I brought you out of Egypt so I could bring you into King. And he's saying to you, and me today, amen, I brought you out of darkness so I could bring you into the marvelous light. Amen. If I got a witness right here, and you ought to be glad, brothers and sisters, about that promise because every time the devil tries to get on your trail and remind you whoo, that you're not all you profess to be, God help us right here, you ought to repeat that promise to the devil. Amen. You ought to be able to stand flat-footed and tell him, he brought me out 
so he could bring me in. Amen. Is there anybody here know what I'm talking about this morning? He brought you out so he could bring you in. Amen. He, y'all ought to help me testify right here. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, amen, who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. The heat of keep of Israel shall not slumber nor sleep, amen. Woo! Oh, yeah, help me right here, Lord. The Lord is my keeper. The shade on my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day nor the moon by night, amen. But the Lord shall preserve me from all the evil. He shall preserve my going out. Hey, and my coming back in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Is there ain't anybody in here get happy with me this morning? You know God brought you out to bring you in. Amen. He brought you out of trouble. Amen. He brought you into joy. Look, he brought you out of dissatisfaction. Amen. To bring you into satisfaction. He brought you out of misery to give you his mercy. He brought you out of sinfulness ways. Amen. To give you salvation. Amen. He brought you out of darkness to place your feet on a solid rock. Amen. He put clapping in your your hands, he put a new song in your mouth, he put running in your feet. Amen. Woo! Hey! And even though nothing's bothering you today, you just start shedding tears and thanking God for all his goodness. If God made, hang on a minute, brother, you're too slow right now. You need to pick up the pace, brother. Look, if God made a way for you, amen, thank him, amen. I said thank God for bringing you out so he could bring you back in, amen. If God put food on your table, tell him thank you, amen. Thank you for bringing you out, amen, so he could bring you back in. If you got a job to go to in the morning, tell him thank you, amen. Look, your health and your strength, tell him thank you, amen. If you know you're going to heaven, tell him thank you, amen. If he brought you out, he'll bring you back in. Why don't you high five somebody? and tell him he'll bring you out Woo! just so he can bring you back in tell him hey he brought me out so he can bring me back in so brother Frankie how do you know that because one Friday on a skull shaped hill amen in a blood soaked cross he died I said didn't he die amen but bright early Sunday morning he got up from the grave amen he brought me out Woo! to bring me back in amen Lean over and tell a neighbor right quick, hey, if you're down, he'll pick you up, amen. If you're lost, he'll save you. I said, if you're lost, he'll save you because he did it for me and he did it for you. Too late, I'm done now. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I might get a brother, brother to give you some lessons, Amen. I'm through. He cares about everything that frustrates you. Your burdens, your bondage. And not only that, he cares about your freedom. He wants to, God wants to set you free, brothers and sisters. He wants you to be free. Especially from other people's prescriptions of you. Whatever. Don't, don't worry, get through with that stuff. Don't worry about what nobody thinks. Because as long as you allow people to define you, look, you're bondage. You're a bondage. You're in bondage to them. Never let nobody allow to get you wrapped up like that. And then he cares about your fellowship. He wants to be around you. He wants to be with you. And he wants you to be around him. Not only him fellowship you, he wants to fellowship back. And to prove how much he wants your fellowship, brothers and sisters, he came looking for you. Oh my, let's think about it. He came looking for you because he desires that fellowship. He came looking for you. Sent Jesus on the cross to die for you. He sought you out. But brothers and sisters, here it is. I'm done. Go ahead and play us something right here, Brother Richard. He cares about your future because he brought you out of all of that just to bring you back in. Brothers and sisters, what did God bring you out of so he could bring you back in? What did God deliver you from to bring you back in? I'm thankful that one day when I was lost and didn't even realize I needed a Savior, God pricked my heart. The preacher told me exactly what I needed to hear. It changed my life forever. Have I done it all right? God only knows how much I messed up along the way. But I'm thankful that 
God passed by one day. Came to me right where I was. And picked me up and established my going in a direction that I knew that I was saved. What about you this morning? Has God brought you out to bring you back in? Are you saved this morning? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt if you die today, you go to heaven? There's a way to come in, but there's only one way. And it's right where we started, sister. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. They may talk about other ways or multiple ways. I don't care what they say on TV. The scripture only teaches one way. Are you trusting in the finished work of the cross? Let's pray. Father, I just pray this morning. If there's somebody in this sanctuary this morning, Father, that may not know you as a person, Lord and Savior. God, maybe there's many that's in here that's struggling this morning. God, need a prayer answered. or God, you know all the situations. God, I pray right now that mercy would come running to them. God, that the peace that passes all understanding would come over them. They'd understand. God, that you're calling them. Maybe calling for salvation. Maybe calling out of the darkness. Or maybe just calling out of a situation, Father. God, we trust in you. God, I trust in the finished work. God, the blood of Jesus makes it all possible. God, I'm thankful for my past and my sins in the past. Father God, the Bible says you put them as far as the east is from the west. Deepest part of the sea, never to be brought up again. But God, I know there's many, there's many, many, many times in all of our lives that Satan brings up what we used to be and the things that we used to do. And God, the thoughts that go through our minds. But God, thank, thank you so much for the blood of Jesus that it covers it all. God has a plan, brothers and sisters, for every one of us. But you've got to come in through Christ. And if you're undone in here this morning, don't walk out these doors without Him. It's just simply saying, Lord, here am I. If you're sitting in here lost and undone this morning, not sure if you're saved, call on Him. If you need to. One of these men in this church to pray with you or help you or 
need more understanding. I don't know what I'm talking to this morning. But God just telling me to say it. If you need a need an answer, you're un, you're not understanding this morning. Maybe your way is not clear. Maybe God's talking to your heart this morning. Simply call on Him. Salvation and direction. Amen. He'll answer in both ways. I'm going to ask one time and we're going to, we're going to close. Is there anybody in here this morning that's not sure that you're saved? If you need prayer this morning, slip up a finger and say, Brother Frank, you pray for me. I'm not sure. I don't know. God, I don't know. God, I don't want to make that right. I don't want Father, I thank you for this time you've given us, Father, for the appointed time and place, Father. God, I pray this morning, God, that something that you've spoke, Father, God, would apply to our lives this week. God, know that we don't have to live in, in bondage. God, we don't have to walk around with a heavy load of burdens in our lives. God, that you care about all those things. God, I ask you to help us this week as we go through this thing called life. Father, help us this morning. We give you all the thanks and honor. Close and I want I'll uh, somebody go to the back door this morning and uh, Brother James, if you or Brother Lewis or somebody grab one of those plates this morning, we'll, we'll take our offering on the way out. Um, I will say this as we get ready to close. Uh, September the twenty first, I mean uh, September the first, I'm sorry, we had uh we had twenty two thousand one hundred sixty eight dollars and forty three cents in the bank. And I looked this morning and we had twenty two thousand sixty seven dollars and eighty eight cents. That was after all our bills were paid. September, um, we bought some building materials and stuff, and uh, I'm hoping at the end of the week we'll have a, we can have a, a more detail. If somebody wants a, a itemized statement or whatever, we'll be setting the computer up uh, in the process of getting our banking stuff uh, changed over. I'm hoping that that'll be done and completed this week. But uh, I just want to give y'all um, just a just a brief update on the money. We still we have twenty two thousand sixty seven dollars eighty eight cents. Amen.